would you be without me? Time to find out. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to Tales of Production, the series where I take a look at the production of the various Transformers movies and tell you some interesting stories that went down. Today's is gonna cover how one leak ended up getting the ending to Transformers Dark of the Moon changed. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, Transformers Dark of the Moon is by far my favorite out of the five Bay films. Though it clearly has its flaws, every time I watch it, I'm always filled with joy. I even celebrated my 18th birthday watching the film with a bunch of good friends of mine. But if there's one thing I hate about the film, it has to be the ending. For those of you who may not remember, Optimus is about to be killed by Sentinel Prime, but before he can deal the final blow, Megatron swoops in to save the day, finally standing up to Sentinel after he was pushed around by him throughout the entire movie. Eventually, the control pillar gets destroyed, causing Cybertron to collapse in on itself. After seeing his homeworld disintegrate in front of his very eyes, Megatron offers Optimus a truce since he has nothing left to fight for. However, what happens next is the problem. After asking Prime who would you be without me, Prime's response was to announce that it was time to find out. He then proceeded to charge and attack his brother, with him ultimately tearing Megatron's head clean from his shoulders, killing the Decepticon leader once and for all. Seeing that his plan to restore Cybertron failed, Sentinel Prime pleaded with Optimus for mercy, claiming all he ever wanted was the survival of their race, with him further saying that betraying the Autobots was the only way. Optimus countered that Sentinel hadn't betrayed the Autobots, but rather himself and then unceremoniously executed Sentinel Prime with Megatron's shotgun. Now, this ending always seemed off to me since Optimus kills Megs and Sentinel in cold blood after they both expressed that they had given up. Megatron saved Optimus at the last possible second, and was repaid by getting his head served up on a silver platter after offering a truce. And Optimus had Sentinel bent under the barrel despite knowing his mentor had no possible way of fighting back. Now, despite whether or not Optimus killing Sentinel and Megatron was just, which is a topic I plan to cover in the future, I think we can all agree that Optimus being able to take down Megatron in under 10 seconds, while only having one arm, was way too convenient. This, among other factors I've listed previously, is why I felt this ending was off. So when I learned that this wasn't the original ending, it all started to make sense. You see, the original ending for Dark of the Moon was vastly different courtesy of the Transformers Dark of the Moon novel, which used an earlier version of the script to play out its events, we are able to read what the original ending would have been. To summarize, the fight on the bridge would have been a lot different. Instead of Optimus getting his arm cut off, resulting in him not being able to fight anymore, originally Optimus was going to be outfought by Sentinel, with him being too weak to keep on going. He would be unable to get back up after being knocked onto his back due to him being physically exhausted. In the film, while fighting Optimus, Sentinel says, always the bravest of us, but you can never make the hard decisions. Our planet will survive. However, in the original script, he shakes his head while walking up to Optimus. And the line is slightly different saying, always the bravest of us, Optimus, but you could never make the hard decisions. Our planet will survive, thanks to me. Always the bravest of us, Optimus, but you could never make the hard decisions. Our planet will survive. After saying this, Sentinel reaches down and picks up his Cosmic Rust Cannon and points it at Optimus's head. Unlike the film where he lost a cannon after he got shot by an RPG, he still has it here. Before Sentinel could finish the job, however, Megatron pulls Sentinel's arm back, causing him to drop the gun. Sentinel calls out Megatron's name in confusion, and Megatron responds by saying, Lord Megatron, as he drives a powerful blow to his face, causing Sentinel to stagger away. Megatron, seizing the opportunity, fires a blast from his shotgun, lifting Sentinel off his feet and sending him crashing down onto a street some distance away. And then he says, three will stand and one will fall. Now this all clearly differs from the film since Sentinel was going to kill Optimus with his sword, while here he would have used his rust cannon. Megatron in the film runs in and fires off several rounds at Sentinel, saying, this is my planet, before putting Sentinel out of commission. However, here he disarms Sentinel and the line is changed to three will stand and one will fall, after he knocks Sentinel away. Now from here, the major changes take place. Megatron extends a hand out to his brother, which he accepts, and pulls Optimus to his feet, and they both charge in to fight Sentinel. 
However, Sentinel is able to fight both of them off with ease. While Sentinel is fighting them off, he says, We were gods once, all of us, but here, there will only be one. Which, as we know, was the line that he said before he was about to execute Optimus in the film. Now, the way Sentinel Prime dies is through a team effort by Optimus and Megatron. Meg's baseball slides into Sentinel, causing Sentinel Prime to stumble onto the ground. As he falls, Optimus jumps over him, landing on the street behind Sentinel. As Sentinel gets up, Optimus blasts the Rust Cannon. It strikes Sentinel Prime fully in the chest. He staggers, clutching at the rapidly expanding hole in his torso, looking bewildered that such a thing could possibly be happening to him. And then he sags to his knees, gasping out, All I ever wanted was the survival of our race. You must see why I had to betray you. Sentinel reaches up with a trembling hand. Optimus ignores it, saying, You didn't betray me. You betrayed yourself. Sentinel's hand sags and falls to the ground, dissolving along with the rest of his body. After killing his mentor, Prime feels as if he just slain a part of himself. In his mind, he thinks, Just as humans who have lost limbs claim that they still feel phantom pain from the missing body parts, so too will I always know the sensation of the absent part of my life called Sentinel. Except, I lost him once. I can lose him again. Shortly after this thought, the control pillar gets destroyed, this time by an airstrike and not by Bumblebee, causing the space bridge to close and for Cybertron to fade away. However, it doesn't collapse in on itself like it does in the film. Megatron lets out a high cry of protest, and Optimus reaches up towards Cybertron, imagining that he was holding it in the palm of his hand until the bridge fully closed. And from here, made possible by the wonderful people on your screen right now, this is what happens next. You felt it. You must have felt it. The drawer of our world. It called to you as forcefully as it calls to me. The difference between us is that I was willing to answer that call. No, it was never about Cybertron any more than it was about Earth now. It was always about you. Whatever nobility you may have once had, or think you've had, was long consumed by your overwhelming need to dominate all you see before you. Such pompousness from you, Prime. Your sanctimoniousness would be more impressive if we did not both know that the two of us are very much alike. We are nothing alike! I wanted to control Cybertron because I thought I was right. You fight me because you believe you are right. I am tired of your control. I die. I am tired of fighting. I sue for peace, Optimus. I will order all Decepticons to stand down. It is over. All this is over. Even endless war must end sometime. Our world calls, and I will devote my existence, and the existence of all Decepticons, not to attacking you or humans, but returning to our home world. I have spent far too long destroying, and it has brought me nothing. Nothing. So I wish to try creating for a time, and see if that brings me something. And am I supposed to believe your words? I am supposed to accept this call for truce. After all the lies and deceits. After all the attempts to lay waste to an entire world. Honestly, Prime. It does not matter to me what you believe. You still hold the weapon of Sentinel Prime. Use it. Annihilate me. I no longer care what you do. All I ask is that whatever decision you make, make it quickly. You are wrong. I am not like you. Because if I were, I would destroy you for showing what any Decepticon would define as weakness.
Your own people may well tear you apart for this change in your attitude. For your sake, as well as theirs, control them. I will. When I do return to Cybertron, and when I do make things right, I will send for you and yours, and we will join and be one race again. A race of peace. We will once again have a home. Now, the resolution after this is almost identical to the film. After Megatron walks away, Optimus ponders over the idea if Megatron could truly change. It then cuts to Sam and Bumblebee, but unlike Sam opening the car door and Bumblebee transforming behind him, Sam is leaning up against Bumblebee who is sitting on the ground. During this, Sam and Carly say that they love one another, and unlike the film where Bumblebee drops gears on the ground, originally he was going to cough one out and hand it to Sam. The scene where Bumblebee says I'm just trying to help out after Sam told him to slow down, and the scene where Bumblebee is commending for his bravery in battle by Ratchet are not present. Lastly, this version of Dark of the Moon ends with Optimus giving the same speech that he did in the film. However, one line is added to it. That being, for I am Optimus Prime, and I send this message to the universe. We are here, we are home. And it's actually odd that this line got cut, since in all of his previous speeches, he addressed himself by name. And in the two films after Dark of the Moon, he did as well. So the redaction of this line in the final film is truly strange. And with that, that is how Dark of the Moon was originally going to end. Now I think the majority of us can say that this ending was leaps and bounds better than the one we ended up with. And you may be wondering why it was changed. And well, it all started with a little Amazon system error. On May 4th, 2011, 21 days before the official release of the trade paperback collection of IDW's Dark of the Moon movie adaptation, Amazon added preview pages to its pre-order listing for the trade paperback. Through a bizarre system error, if you click the cover or search inside this book button, you would get around the first seven and last seven pages of the trade. This obviously led to major story points being revealed. Unsurprisingly, immediately after these preview pages had been discovered, they were posted as breaking news on several major Transformers fan sites, often without a spoiler warning. Now, the movie adaptation comic for the most part follows the old script of the novelization used to play out its story, but the comic has one significant change. Unlike in the novel where Megatron and Optimus talk it out, the comic follows Megatron's thoughts. He wonders to himself if he and Optimus could ever work together to restore Cybertron, or ever trust one another again. His final thought is wondering if Prime is prepared to answer a question, that being who he would be without him, which as we know was the question that got Megatron killed. So it's interesting to see that it was originally a thought in his head. Now from here, the comic is ambiguous on Megatron's fate. Since after his thoughts end, the next panel is Bumblebee with Sam and Carly, and the panel under it shows Optimus walking out of the flames that he and Megatron were previously standing in. The last panel shows Igor wondering where Megatron is, which is a detail that wasn't in the novelization nor present in the film. Now, the comic compared to the novel story-wise is closer to what we got in the final film, which means the comic likely used a slightly revised version of the script Peter David used to write the novel. I come to this conclusion since the Who Would You Be Without Me line, said by Megatron in the film, is stated here. Albeit in the comic, it's a thought that's in Megatron's mind, but my point here is that the line wasn't said in the novelization, meaning it must have came from an updated script. However, I believe the conversation that Optimus and Megatron had in the novel happened after this panel. I say that because the final battle in the novel plays out the exact same way in the comic. Optimus in the comic is even illustrated still holding the Rust Cannon when he confronts Megatron. The only scene in the comic that is deliberately missing for some reason is what happens to Megatron. And I say deliberately because Igor gets the last panel all to himself, questioning what happened to Megatron. As for the answer to why this happened is lost to time. However, a theory of mine is that they couldn't fit the scene in. You see, the comic had to cram a whole bunch of story into only 87 pages. This can explain why significant events such as Starscream and Shockwave's deaths were only one page. If we take a look at the conversation Prime and Megatron had in the novel, it takes up almost two full pages. 
and for a comic that is constrained to a certain number of pages per issue, this conversation would be impossible to translate one-to-one. -one. So they deliberately made Megatron's fate unknown to stick within their page boundaries, and to make readers go to the theater to find out what happened to everyone's favorite Decepticon leader. So with that said, you now may be wondering why the ending was changed for the film, and luckily we do have an official answer for this. According to Michael Bay's website administrator Nelson, the ending was changed because the studio did not want the adaptations to share the same ending with the film. And if you think about it, this makes a lot of sense since the majority of the plot for Dark of the Moon was spoiled almost two entire months before the film would release. So as a form of damage control, the studio would naturally want to change as much as they could in order for the movie to still be fresh. This is why the events of that were spoiled, such as Starscream's death were altered in some way. Originally, Sam was going to stick the boomstick into Starscream's mouth, but this was changed to his eye at the last minute. Now, the studio wasn't the only one angered by this leak. Michael Bay was furious and made sure that nothing like this would ever happen again. Bay enforced an executive order, forbidding the creation for any prequel or adaptation for Age of Extinction. This is why we never saw any tie-in movie comics or novels for AoE, which is a film that undoubtedly would have benefited from it. This order extended to The Last Night as well, since we didn't get any tie-in material for that film, which in the end was a terrible call since it desperately needed it. It would take seven years after this order before IDW would be allowed to produce another movie tie-in comic. That, of course, being the Bumblebee movie prequel comic. But it doesn't look like we will ever get any future IDW movie tie-in comics, since IDW is officially losing the Transformers license at the end of 2022. Meaning, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, which comes out during the summer of 2023, likely won't be getting any tie-in comic material unless Hasbro finds a new comic publisher. And just like that, that was why the original ending to Dark of the Moon was changed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Tales of Production playlist for some more awesome stories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It means a lot, and it helps keep my channel running. So a big fat thank you to you guys. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro.